why you're not hearing back from Canadian employers when you make your job applications that's what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video and you want to stick to the very end if you are looking for a job in Canada especially from outside of Canada <music> Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad that you are watching. If you're new here, welcome, Karibu. My name is Eva Mtali, and on this channel, we talk about all things travel, we talk about immigration, we talk about working abroad, we talk about visa opportunities, and once in a while, I share with you my travel escapades to different parts of the world. So, if any of those topics sound exciting to you, you want to hit the subscribe button below, and once you have done so, you want to hit the notification bell as well. So that every single time I shoot a new video, you do not miss out. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about another most frequently asked question on my channel. Eva, I have been making job applications to employers in Canada, but I do not get any response or I constantly get regrets. What is the problem? So we are going to look at some of the reasons why your job applications are being rejected by Canadian employers and what you can do about it. So the number one reason why your job applications for jobs in Canada are getting rejected is because you're not putting yourself in the potential employer's shoes. And what do I mean? So let's say one of the main hurdles that somebody who's looking to hire a foreign worker in Canada has to deal with is first of all, does this person even exist? Are they qualified for this job? Are they the best person who can do this job for me? And um, let's say they are convinced that you're the best person for that job. Then comes another hurdle. They have to get what is called the labor market impact assessment. That is an LMIA. They have to get a positive LMIA report, which basically means going to the employment department in Canada and convincing them that I have this job opening and in the entire country of Canada, there is no Canadian citizen or permanent resident who has the qualifications that I'm looking for or who is interested in doing that job. That's like another hassle. So by the time you are making your application for a job in Canada, you have to put yourself in the employer's shoes. This is what the employer has to go through. And once they have gotten the labor market impact assessment, then they have to worry about bringing you into Canada. So my suggestion is when you make your application for a job in Canada, from outside of Canada, try to address as many of these issues that your potential employer is currently dealing with. And that's why in this video up here, I talk about some of the documents that you need to prepare, have them in hand before you even start looking for a job in Canada. So for example, if I have applied for a nanny job, I would want to indicate in that cover letter and say, hey, even though I am based in Kenya, I already have my IELTS or my French um, proficiency exam report. I already have my passport ready. It's valid. I'm already vaccinated for COVID-19. I have my police clearance certificate. I have my papers already assessed by the education credential assessment agencies. And all I need to do once you give me the job offer, I only have to go to the embassy and ask for a visa or I just need to I have my express entry um, filled out or whatever program it is you're planning to move into Canada I'm just ready all I have left is this job offer and once I get that job offer I'm ready to come to Canada like try to take away any doubts the employer might have or try and answer any issues this potential employer has but if let's say you're asking for a job you don't even have a passport you haven't done your police clearance certificates you haven't done your proficiency test for English or French you haven't had your degrees or your certificates or diplomas assessed if they meet the equivalent in Canada, it's just too much hassle to even think of hiring you. So make sure that you address all those issues. If you have those documents, you can attach them to show your employer, hey, I'm here and that's how ready I am. Number two reason why you're probably not hearing back from employers in Canada or why your applications for jobs in Canada are getting rejected is because of grammatical errors on your cover letter or on your CV. Remember, the official languages in Canada is English and French. 
So when you write a cover letter, and believe you me, I have received some people have sent me, hey Eva, can you please just go through my CV, go through my cover letter, tell me what am I doing wrong, why is my application for jobs in Canada getting rejected? And within the first two paragraphs, I see tons of grammatical errors. Please, when you have written your CV, when you have written your cover letter, just run it through even Microsoft Word grammar check, or you can use a software such as Grammarly or just ask somebody to check it for you. So if you're going to work in Canada and you're already having errors in your CV, grammatical errors, gross grammatical errors, or having errors in your cover letter, I mean, you only have one chance for a first impression. You're already considered to be a careless person. If let's say I was looking for the job of a nanny and your cover letter has all these errors, I'd be like, I don't think this is a person. I want even to be helping my child with homework if they couldn't even write a proper cover letter with proper grammar. And I would even start doubting, um, like did they even pass the proficiency exam? Have they even done it? And let's say in a case where you haven't even done it, I'll be like, maybe that's why they haven't even done it, yeah? So make sure you go through your CV, go through your cover letter and make sure that it does not have any grammatical errors, yeah? Number three reason, almost related to the CV and cover letter issue, why your applications for jobs in Canada are getting rejected is because you have not tailored your cover letter or your CV to the job requirements. So there are so many jobs out there. We have different skills. So maybe I have been a nanny before. I have worked as a chemical engineer. I have been a teacher. I have been a violin, whatever. I don't have to put all that. Okay, I could, but if it's not going to help my CV, then focus on those things that are related to the job that you are applying for yeah don't just have one generic cv so that's one error most people do they just have a generic cv a generic cover letter make sure you tailor your cv make sure you tailor your cover letter to the specific job that you are applying for and one thing that i've noticed about canadian employers when they list the requirements of a job they are listed in order of importance or preference so usually the skill listed as number one is the most important and preferred of all the other skills and number two and going all the way so make sure that as you respond to this job as you respond for this um vacancy um or opening you are indicating how your skills your experience your education are meeting the job requirements and state that very clearly in your cv state it very clearly in your cover letter yeah number four reason why your application for jobs in canada is probably getting rejected is because because of lack of a digital presence or because of a questionable digital presence and this is what i mean so let's say for example i am in uh, canada and i am looking for um um chef for example and then you have applied for this job so the first thing I, I want to do is to check to learn more about you and maybe I could decide to use Google and just search you there or use LinkedIn or go on Facebook or Instagram or whatever so my advice for you when you are looking for a job in Canada from outside of Canada create an online presence that you would be proud of if your potential employer found it there for you because it's 2021 guys and if you're already looking for a job from another country, you're probably using the internet to use for this job. Why aren't you using the internet to market yourself? So for example, if um, it's Facebook, yeah, and let's say I'm looking for nanny jobs, yeah, I, if I had some pictures there of me interacting with kids or at my current job, but I don't have to show the kids' faces. I could take from the back of us playing, or if let's say I'm a writer, and um, I could talk about some of the nanny issues and just you know prove my authority there or if it's instagram and so just make sure that your digital presence is speaking for you and it shows you in the light that you would like to be known yeah so for example if i am applying for a nanny job and all my pictures the last 10 pictures on my instagram account is me drunk and just being funny and weird. I don't know how many people want to trust you with their babies when your last 10 pictures are of you in clubs and just doing funny things, drunk 24 seven. No way. Number five reason why your job applications in Canada are probably getting rejected is probably because of the new public policy 
that Canada just implemented and you can check this video here where I talk more about it. So currently in Canada, if you are visiting on a visitor's visa or on a tourist visa and you still have legal status, you can legally work in Canada if you have a work permit. So if you get a job offer, you can apply to the Canadian immigration for employer specific work permit. Basically what that means, if I get hired by Ivam Tali restaurant and I apply for my work permit through Ivam Tali restaurant, then I can only work for Ivam Tali restaurant. So that's in a few words, what is an um, employer specific work permit. So because there's already this group of immigrants who are already in Canada and they have status, then employers can have a slightly larger pool than they had before for people who can work for them. And that's probably why you're no longer hearing from employers because they're probably taking advantage of this pool. But that doesn't mean that you cannot compete effectively. You still can compete effectively. And maybe that's something you might consider if you're struggling to find your way into Canada, you can apply for a visitor's visa and go on a vacation. And during your vacation, you can spare maybe one to two hours every day and talk to potential employers, talk to network with people in companies you're interested in working for and just find out if they have vacancies, talk to them. And then in the future, if they have something, maybe they could offer you just that's just a thought. Number seven reason why you're probably not hearing back from employers in Canada is you're applying for jobs that do not have visa sponsorships or do not have LMIAs, yeah? And what do I mean? So in Canada, you can apply for jobs depending on where you're located. So some Canadian employers have already applied for the LMIA that I've talked about and therefore can provide for you visa sponsorship. So when you are looking for a job in Canada, that is something you want to look out for. Does this job have a positive LMIA or at least does it offer visa sponsorship to people outside of Canada? And this video up here, I talk about it at length and I show you how to look for jobs in Canada, especially from outside of Canada and to how to find those employers who are willing to offer you visa sponsorship. So if you keep applying for jobs whereby the employers are not providing visa sponsorships or they do not have positive LMIAs, then you're just wasting your time and you probably will never hear back from these Canadian employers. And one way to work around that, you could probably um, check out for job boards that are targeted towards foreign workers and make sure that you fill out your job profile there make it up to date and also sign up for job alerts for those kind of jobs that you are interested in yeah well guys that's it for today in terms of why you're probably not hearing back from employers in canada or why your job applications for jobs in canada are getting rejected let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions around this and i'll be more than happy to answer them Thank you for staying up to the very end. I definitely look forward to meeting you on the next one. Bye-bye.